Welcome back to another review and today we'll talk about the NumPy K2 single board computer. It's kind of a Raspberry Pi alternative. It's a very very fresh product from Friendly Elac company and uh, it's based on the Logic S905 uh, quad core processor. So I'll read you the specs here from the page included with the the box of the product and I'll do a quick unboxing and show you the item so basically this board single board computer is very new and it has 2 GB of DDR3 RAM GPIO interface 4 USB ports version 2 a gigabyte uh, internet Ethernet and also it has a DC 5 volts uh, interface port and uh, debug interface HDMI version 2 I think and micro USB with OTG interface also onboard IO receiver power and micro SD card slot also Wi-Fi and Bluetooth onboard and also it has an external uh, antenna Wi-Fi socket so that's basically it as for eMMC storage, there's a special option to buy a separate module and connect to the board so you don't have an eMMC in the default with the default board you can buy it and install it with a special socket on the PCB so this is the specs here and basically not the specs but the layout and how to burn an image with a few tools on the windows and that's included with the box of the product so let's do, let's do a quick unboxing and I'll show you how it looks like so what you get with the package you buy is first the board uh, USB to micro USB cable and a simple remote control so basically you can use this board as a set -up box because it's based on LM logic and it's compatible with Kodi which is very important so nice idea to add the remote control batteries are not included but again you can use it as a set -up box mini PC there are TV boxes based on also on M Logic on the market. Other accessories, optional accessories you can buy are there's a nice heat sink combined with a fan with a ceramic sticker here. There are also holes on the PCB so you can mount the heat sink. Also, a very nice idea. So that's an option if you want to buy it or you can use your own heat sink you also have a case, plastic case here you can see the quality, very nice uh, you have four legs stickers inside the case with all the screws here so also a nice idea you have uh, holes for the GPL interface access and also other holes here for the interfaces from the side or the front and it doesn't have an external Wi-Fi antenna at all I don't know why but that's what I noticed about this case but again it looks good high quality so that's also another option to buy with extra money also you have an option to buy a power adapter this board uh, needs about 5 volts, 2 amps power supply unit to work so you also have an option to get the power using the DC input on the board so let's do a quick uh, unpacking of the board and I'll show you exactly how it looks like let's turn a look So 
So this is the GPIO interface you can see here the chip here the S905 you have memory 1 GB here an additional 1 GB here on the back micro SD card slot here also I receiver power thing and this is the EMMC socket so that's an option debug interface HDMI version 2 it supports 4k at 60 60 frames per second so that's the maximum and very nice also here on the side you have the LAN 4 USB ports also and this is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip and it also has an external Wi-Fi antenna socket here very nice board again it should support Scody and it's very fresh and new currently this board only supports Android 5.1 but I'm sure there will be more images available so that's it very cute good quality and it should fit really good inside the case also an option you can you don't have to buy the case but again option so I hope you enjoy my quick overview of the Nano Pi K2 thanks for watching and bye Welcome back and this part of the review I'm going to show you how this board fits inside the case. The case is an option, you can buy it I think for two dollars, I'm not sure about the price. So also a nice option. So how do you do it? First you can see it, the case is composed of two parts. You have all the venting holes, ear slots and the holes for the interfaces just take the board and of course it's highly recommended buying the heat sink from a friendly ELAC, friendly arm because it has two mounting holes for the PCB in the PCB for the heat sink so you have a clamping force against the chips here so you get good cooling also, you can use this uh, thermal pad included with the heat sink. You can cut it according to the distance and the length of the chips together. And basically, first put it here on the PCB and later close it with the heat sink. So, right now I'm showing you how the heat sink fits. and I'll give it a try so that's how it fits you have a nice clamping force here so now you can see of course this is the power I think one of the connectors or the GPIO interface pins is a good uh, power source so that's for the heat sink like I said I recommended using this thermal, thermal pad it's not a sticker it's a thermal pad and next step of course is to open the case like I said and this is the base uh, of the case, just put the board inside. You have four, five, sorry, four, five, five uh, screws here, and four legs for the bottom of the case. So the legs are an option, you can stick it. To the base and you just close the upper part of the case 
it's a snap connection and that's it now that's how it looks like it there's a few space between the case not much between the heat sink and the upper case upper part but it's okay I think so this is how it looks like looks good you have the venting holes here access to the micro SD card so that's an option with this heat sink very recommended you can also buy a different one if you want maybe much smaller one so you will have additional space between the upper uh, part of the case you need some uh, air to flow between the two so that's it for the case and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the last part of the video where I'm testing the board trying to run maybe Android or Linux and give it, giving it a try so thanks for watching and bye everybody welcome back as you can see right now uh, the board is booting and I'm loading Android version 5.1.1 Lollipop and you can see here the case with the fan spinning and you can also hear the sound so that's the case with the board and Android is currently running as you can see so that was the case also you have an option for a remote control also included with the, the kit with the board I mean and it's pretty good and you have all the basic keys here uh, volume up down mute and uh, navigation up down left right and the power so remote control is an option you can use it with the board just like with a setup box android tv box so that's an option and um, right now i'm in android main screen as you can see it's pretty clean os no junk here it comes with google play store also pre-installed and cody as you can see here showbox also works other movie apks also work and i'll show you how showbox box works and just simple neck okay so you can see here everything works well and I'll try to play something without uh, breaking any copyright laws so let's try something Cody also works really good and I'll show you in a minute So it works. I also show you a few samples with Cody. And of course I'll stop it. So that's for Showbox. And let's try Cody. It supports 4K at maximum 60 frames per second and you can play 4K, 2K videos of course and it plays well so let's try a few samples that's my collection this is not a 4K television but you can see it plays very smooth So it works and picture quality also great. Again, it's MLG based, 
uh, SOC, so everything works really good. Let's try this one, another 4K. Also very smooth. I'm running Android from a micro SD card, not from the EMMC. And of course, if I get the EMC module, I will also connect it to the board. So right now I'm only using a micro SD card. So let's go out and I'll show you more system information. So Android runs really fast because of the cooling also, the heat sink and the fan uh, and two benchmarks that's the result I got and also under system information you can see Android version 5.1.1 and uh, NanoPi K2 is the board what core processor as for the GPU I didn't say before it's a Mali 450 MP I think it's a single core uh, GPU not a dual core but I'm not sure so that's for the GPU and memory in this board you have 2 GB 2 GB of RAM and that's it about the CPU frequency, it's between 100 MHz up to 1.5 GHz. So that's for uh, system information and to two benchmarks. Play Store also works, everything works really fast. Wi-Fi also works really great. Right now I'm using Wi-Fi. So everything is working fast from a micro SD card with the image of course there will be more there will be more images for this board it's just a preview because they are currently working on this issue so as for Linux distributions you will need to wait and I'll try to make another review a full review when I get more images so Currently only version 5.1.1 Android is supported and uh, let's go to the settings just uh, show it remaining space from the micro SD card also you see Android information so that's basically it and also web surfing also works really fast browser browser so it works well right now I'm using a wireless keyboard this one and a Xiaomi wireless mouse very recommended very easy to use so you get basically a type of mini PC slash development board and it definitely could, could be a Raspberry Pi competitor and it works really fast the selection of the hardware was good so we'll just wait and see more images as they come out so thanks for watching and you're welcome to comment in the video section and tell me what you think. Thank you and bye.